Hi students, we are going to discuss about chemical equilibrium. So in this uh, topic, we are going to discuss types of chemical reactions and the basic terms forward reaction, backward reaction rate and equilibrium state and the characteristics of equilibrium state, types of chemical equilibrium, dark mass action, KC, KP, KK relay, uh, expressions and uh, Q and KC relation, extent of chemical reaction, factors affecting the equilibrium, constant and equilibrium state and finding composition and KC, KP at equilibrium, Lichardt-Lier principle and its applications. Okay. So these uh, points we are uh, going to discuss here. And first thing, what we can uh, discuss, types of chemical reactions. Chemical reactions we are taking. Chemical reactions are two types will be there. What are the two types? What is the reversible reactions? Reversible reactions and another is the irreversible reactions. One is the reversible reaction, another is irreversible reactions. Reversible reactions based on the experimental conditions, the reactants will be converted into products. Our product may be converted to reactants. Okay, so 100% uh, reaction will be not takes place. Example for this reaction, PCL3 will be nice to PCL3 SCL yes, uh, in the other state. So this is a simple example for a uh, reversible process. Irreversible process means once they are completed, they cannot convert into products into reactants. So only one direction it will be to react into products. So Generally, combustion reactions, uh, neutralization reactions, uh, and uh, some decomposition reactions, not all decomposition, some decomposition reactions, precipitation reactions will be concerned as irreversible uh, reactions. Okay, so there is when there is a reversible reaction, there will be chance of formation of equilibrium state. Okay, so in this uh, reversible reaction you can observe that the reaction is moving uh, reactant to product and product to reactant. Okay, so reactant to product and product to reactant. So this reaction, reactant to product we are calling as a forward reaction and this is called as a backward reaction. Okay, and the here uh, during the reaction, the concentration changes. The change in concentration with respect to time we are calling as the rate of the reaction. So these are basic terms we are using uh, for equilibrium state. And the next one, what is the equilibrium state? Okay. So what is the equilibrium state? In two points you can remember that is one is the state at which rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction or the state which the composition of reactants and products reactants and products does not change with that does not change with that state we are calling as a equilibrium state. So rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction or composition of the reactants and products does not change with the time. Okay. So graphically if you are taking, if you are taking the rate of reaction versus time. So rate of forward reaction, rate of backward reaction you are taking. Rate of forward reaction initially increases. Okay. And uh, rate of forward reaction will be if your reactants are converting to products. Okay. So, rate of backward reaction increases, rate of forward reaction will be decreases. And at a particular point, rate of forward reaction is equal to rate of backward reaction. That point we are calling as the equilibrium state. When you are taking concentration versus time, okay, your reactant concentration decreases, product concentration increases in a forward reaction. Okay. And this is uh, increasing and this is decreasing in a backward reaction. That means so generally if your reaction is going on, what happens? First, concentration of the reactant will be decreases, 
products will be increases and reactants and products and reach particular time uh, equilibrium in this case at equilibrium reactant concentration equal to reactant product concentration and some cases concentration versus time you are taking it will be decreases it will be increases but here this is the product concentration this is the reactant concentration but at equilibrium product concentration is more than reactant concentration same way it may also go like this okay so here reactant concentration here product concentration at equilibrium what happens rate of this uh, concentration of the reactants are greater than reactant this is the concentration versus time. So, oh, here rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction, but concentrations may or may not be equal at equilibrium. Okay, that point you are there. So, this is the definition for uh, explanation for equilibrium state. So, what are the characteristics of equilibrium state? Okay, characteristics of equilibrium state. We are going to discuss. Characteristics case, what we will get it. Uh, first thing, equilibrium can attain from either of the side. Either of the side, equilibrium will be come from reactant to product or product to reactant. Okay, so it is dynamic nature. Dynamic nature. So uh, reactions never complete at any instant. It will be forward reaction going on and backward reaction going on. Only the rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction. Okay. Next one, it will be rate of forward reaction equal to rate of backward reaction that already studied. Okay. And when uh, we are applying the equilibrium, okay. So equilibrium state not affected by by uh, catalyst equilibrium state not affected by catalyst but the concentration temperature pressure addition of inert gases inert gases may affect uh, equilibrium state okay so these are some characteristics of equilibrium state you can find out okay and the next one uh, one more point by the definition of equilibrium state also you can check the composition of the reactant and product does not change with the time. Composition of the reactant and product does not change with the time. So that is the characteristics of the equilibrium uh, state. So what are the types of equilibrium? Types of equilibrium means equilibrium generally two types will be there. What are the two types? Homogeneous equilibrium, heterogeneous equilibrium. Example in homogeneous case like you have H2 gas plus I2 gas giving rise to 2 HI gas. In this case, all the reactant products are in the same phase, so it is a homogeneous equation. Like NH4HS decompose and giving NH3 and H2S. This is a gas, this is the gas, and this is a solid. Okay, so this will be a two different uh, phases will be there, so it is a heterogeneous equilibrium. This is the types of equilibrium you have. Generally, another type physical equilibrium, chemical equilibrium also exists. Okay. Next, <coughs> we are going law of mass action. Okay, what is the law of mass action is giving information. Okay, law of mass action. It's saying the rate of forward reaction is directly proportional to product of active masses to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. Okay, so what is that uh, meaning? Suppose A and B, M moles of A, N moles of B, giving some products. This a forward reaction is going on. Okay, so A related active mass and then A, A, and B related active mass A. B. This is the A represent active mass. So, what is the law of mass action then? This rate of forward reaction directly proportional to product of active masses to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. Okay. So, when you are taking this one, you will get constant. 
which is the uh, red constant for the forward reactions. Okay, this is the last of law of mass action. So here we are using active mass. So what is the active mass? Give the information. So for our solutions, what we have to take for gas is what we have to take. So suppose active solution we have, then active mass expressed in terms of molarity, and it is represented in a box. Concentration of A means we are writing concentration of A is equal to concentration of A is represented like this. Active solution we are using the molarity. For gases, we are using partial pressures. We are using partial pressures. We use P A like that. If A is a gas, P A. Partial pressure of gas A. Pure solids and pure liquids. Pure solids and pure liquids are present. Their density will be cons constant. Okay, density will be constant. Density means mass by volume will be constant. So, if you divide in both sides and multiply it, number of moles by volume is constant. Means concentration remains constant. So, pure solids and pure liquids concentration does not change with that time. That's why this activity we are taking as the active mass will be considered as a one for pure solids and pure liquids. Okay, this is the law of mass action. Okay, by using the law of mass action. We are writing the expressions for the Kc and Kp and K3. So Kc means in terms of concentration, Kp means in terms of partial pressures, K I means in terms of mole fraction. Okay. So what is the Kc relation will becomes Kc generally rate of forward reaction by rate of backward reaction. Okay. And what is the expression will become Kc? Suppose and taking m moles of A plus n moles of B giving rise to P moles of C and Q moles of D. This is a basic equation I am taking. Try to write the case expression for that. Here, yeah, product concentrations, uh, concentration of C into concentration of D to the power of the stoichiometric functions. By concentration of A for M and concentration of B power N. So there is a Kc expression in terms of concentration and Kp expression what you will get partial pressure of C to the power of P and partial pressure of B to the power of Q and partial pressure of A to the power of N and partial pressure of B to the power of N we are getting. This is a Kp expression we are getting. Same way you are getting Kk in terms of mole fraction, mole fraction of C to the power of P and mole fraction of D to the power of Q, mole fraction of A to the power of M and mole fraction of B to the power of is that in terms of Kc, Kp and Kk. For us, important formula is the relation between Kp and Kc. Kp is equal to Kc to Rp power del n g. This is important term we are using. So, what is the del n g? Number of moles of product in gas phase minus number of moles of reactant in gas phase. Okay. Kp equal to Kc, Rp power del n g. Okay. Similarly, you can have Kp, Kp relation is equal to total pressure power del n g. Total pressure power del n g. These are Kp and Kp relation we have. Okay. So, we got Kp and Kc and Kk expressions and they are relation between uh, Kp and Kc and Kp and Kp and we got it. Okay. Now, what is a Q and Kc? Okay. So, what is the Q basically? Q is a reaction coefficient. Okay. Q is a reaction coefficient. The expression will be same. So concentration of C to the power of uh, B, concentration of B to the power of Q by concentration of A to the power of M and concentration of B to the power of N. And KC also have the same expression. Concentration of C to the power of P and concentration of B to the power of Q. Concentration of A to the power of M and concentration of B to what is the basic difference between this Q and Kc? Q is not constant. It is not constant. It changes with concentrations. So if I change A concentration, D concentration, C concentration, D concentration, Q will be changes. Okay. But Kc constant at given temperature. Constant at given temperature. So Kc value constant at given temperature. So it does not change in the changing concentration of the reactants or 
product. Okay, so that is the basic difference. Okay, when Q is greater than KC, it is possible, and Q less than KC will be possible, and Q is greater equal to KC will be possible. This Q equal to KC will be give the information about equilibrium state. Give the information about equilibrium state. And these two conditions equilibrium will be not exist. Q greater than KC means this products will be more than reactants like that. Concentration, then product will be converted into reactants. So backward reaction will be takes place. Reaction not at equilibrium. Okay. Q less than means reactants are more. So this reactants converted into products. Forward reaction will be takes place. The reaction not at equilibrium will be like that. Okay. And what is the extent of reaction? If you're taking extent of reaction, okay. If you're taking KC values, KC values 0, maybe 10 power minus 3, 10 power 3. Okay. So if KC values less than what we are discussing, extent of reaction. Based on the KC values, how you can decide whether it is uh, reversible or irreversible. When this is the generally you have to consider is that equilibrium will be exist here will be KC will be very less, so reaction generally not start. Okay, reaction will not start. It will be more uh, favorable. Uh, this our uh, type of reactions are backward reactions. Okay, is more favorable. And uh, this 10 power 3 means it is no reaction going to complete. So it will be more uh, forward reaction side. I try to give the products. Okay. So a reaction may not be start or if it is backward reaction is more favorable. This reaction going to end or forward reaction is more favorable. In these cases, equilibrium will be exist uh, uh, in these cases. Okay, so that is a, a lock mass action relation Q and K C extent of reactions, chemical reactions. Next, we are going to discuss factors affecting the Equilibrium state as well as the equilibrium constant. First, we are doing equilibrium constant. Okay. So, equilibrium constant case, we are using that uh, factors affecting a uh, K. So, equilibrium will be only affected by two things. One is the temperature. One is the mode of writing equation. Mode of writing equation. One is the temperature. Another is the mode of writing. Equations. So temperature is an experimental factor, this is the non-experimental factor will be there. Okay. So how it will be temperature will be explained by using this formula log k2 by k1 is equal to delta h by 2.303 or 1 by t1 minus 1 by t2 okay. or t2 minus t1 by t1 into t2. So first case suppose delta h equal to 0 means it is neither exothermic nor endothermic. In this case, this term will be zero. Then uh, log K2 by Q. Okay, it's zero. Zero means what? Log 1. So log, log cancel. K1 equal to K2. So whenever the uh, reaction is neither exothermic nor uh, endothermic, then it will be what? Uh, equilibrium constant will be remains constant, does not change. And second case, delta H equal to negative means it is an exothermic reaction the reaction is exothermic exothermic means this term will come now negative okay less than zero and log k2 by k1 less than log 1 so k2 less than k1 in this case temperature increases equilibrium constant decreases for which reactions exothermic Okay, that is the important one. Temperature increases, KC value decreases for exothermic reactions. And delta H will be positive. Positive means it is an end of. So we are saying kind of thing. Log K2 by K1 is greater than log 1. So K2 greater than K1. So temperature increases, KC increases for endothermic reactions. So this is the uh, temperature dependence of uh, Kc and the next one, more of writing, okay. okay. So
So mode of in case, so we have one equation is there, a giving rise to b. Okay, this is the equation. Then the this is the case equilibrium constant. Suppose I am uh, reversing the equation. The reaction is reversed. The new constant will be comes as a reciprocal. The new rate constant comes as a reciprocal. And if I multi uh, multiply with some n, like n moles of a giving rise to n moles of b. For this reaction, Kc new constant will become power n. Multiplication means power will become. Suppose I am adding the reaction a plus b and uh, c plus b type. This is a k1 and k2. So the overall case b plus b. The new constant will become k1 into k2 product. Okay. So reversed reciprocal multiplication power. And if it is uh, addition multiplication, if you are doing subtraction, subtraction we are doing, then a minus c giving rise to b minus d or a plus b giving rise to b minus b plus c. This kind of subtraction case this is a k1 and k2 means the new constant is equal to k1 by division will become. So it is a reciprocal here power, here multiplication, here division will become. So in this way the uh, uh, equilibrium constant will be get affected by more of right equation. Next we got uh, know that what is the factors affecting equilibrium. Now equilibrium state related we are going. Equilibrium state related, what we have concentration and temperature and pressure and finally addition of inert gases. Inert gases. Okay. This uh, concentration, temperature, pressure and addition of inert gases. Okay. Concentration of reactant increases, it will be go forward reaction to complete the reaction. If product increases, it will be more backward reaction. Okay, that way the equilibrium. So we are changing concentration, equilibrium get disturbed, it will be more either forward reaction or backward reaction. When temperature changes, if it is an exothermic reaction, then temperature increases, Kc decreases. So in this case, it will be go backward reaction to get uh, back to equilibrium. In the case, if temperature increases, and Kc will be increases. Okay, so it will be go forward reaction. Okay, and the pressure case if delta n g equal to zero, no effect will be there pressure. And if delta n g not equal to zero, okay, so it will be coming uh, delta n g negative means gases products are less compared to the reactant and delta n g positive. Okay. So in this case we are pressure increases, reaction will be go forward reaction to decrease the number of moles. And in this case pressure increases, reaction will be move backward reaction to decrease the number of moles. And addition of inert gases two ways you are seeing a constant uh, volume a constant volume, no effect will be there. A constant volume, no effect will be there. And a constant pressure. A constant pressure when you are seeing, what happens? If it is delta NG equal to zero, then no effect. If delta NG not equal to zero, then the reaction move in a direction to increase number of moles, increase number of moles, okay. Reaction is moved in a direction to increase number of moles, that is the point of view. Here normal pressure is not constant, in, uh, the pressure increases, the reaction move in direction to decrease number of moles, here pressure is constant, so, so uh, it will be increase 
number of moles. Okay, so this is the uh, factor selecting the equilibrium state. Okay. And the next uh, very important we are doing the problems. What is the important? Finding composition and Kc, Kp at the equilibrium. Okay, suppose if I am taking some equations, okay, N2 plus 3H2 gas, other gas, it is 2 NH3. In this gas, if I am taking, what is the expression for Kc? The gas, this is the gas, and this is the gas. So Kc, I can write concentration of NH3 power 2 by concentration of N2, concentration of H2 over 3. Same with Kp expression means partial pressure of NH3 power 2 by partial pressure of N2 and partial pressure of H2 power 3. So like that we can write Kc, Kp expressions. Okay. And first I am taking uh, initially some moles will be there, like A moles will be there, B moles will be there, yeah, nothing is there. Okay. So reacted are formed. Okay. From this one mole react with the three moles and the two moles. So x moles react with the three x moles and with the two x moles. Okay. And uh, what will be present at equilibrium then? A minus x, B minus 3x and 2x will be there. Okay, these are the number of moles at equilibrium. Suppose you know the value, okay. If you know the volume we know, then what happens? We can able to find the concentration of N2 is equal to A minus X by B and concentration of H2 is equal to B minus 3X by B and concentration of NH3 is equal to 2X by B. So once we know the concentration, we can substitute in Kc expression, then we can able to find Kc. Still you want to find Kp means Kp is equal to Kc into R to power del NG you can use. Okay. Now we got Kc and Kp expressions. Okay. Suppose you want to find Kp, then you have to find n total first. n total is equal to how much? A minus x plus b minus 3x plus 2x. So you are getting the what? <coughs> oh. So here uh, 4x a plus b. So minus 4x plus 2x means minus 2x. Okay. Now, we have to find partial pressure. Partial pressure equal to number of mole fraction into total pressure. So number of moles by n total into total pressure. So here in terms of partial pressure you want to do a minus x by a plus b minus 2x into b total pressure. b minus 3x by a plus b minus 2x b and 2x by a plus b minus 2x. Now we got the partial pressures, then apply these partial pressures, you can know that a value and x value and total pressure, we can able to find each partial pressure and substituting in Kp expression, you can able to get the Kp value. Okay. So this is about what factors affecting the, uh, uh, writing the composition of the uh, substances. If you know the Kc, I can find that what is the composition and if I know this values, I can able to find the Kc and Kp expressions. Okay. So this is the another one. We completed. Next one, Lichatier principle. Lichatier principle case, what is the Lichatier principle will be there? It is uh, if any system at equilibrium, okay, so any stress we are applying, so what happens? That will be explained the Lichatier principle. Any stress applied at equilibrium, the system will be moved in a direction to nullify the stress. What is the stress meaning? Here, yeah, stress means the changing in concentration, temperature, pressure, that we factor affecting the equilibrium state. That you are changing means the system is try to move again get back to the equilibrium. So that is a Lichatier principle and it will be applicable for both physical and chemical process and uh, it will be give only qualitative treatment, okay, means exact temperature it will be not mentioned or exact pressure not given, only it will give high pressure or high temperature, like that information it will be given, okay. As per if you are taking concentration, okay, 
So according to Lichati uh, principle, if you use in, increase the concentration of the reactants, then what happens? Concentration of the reactants we are increasing. Then reaction move in a direction, decrease the concentration of the reactants. Then that is a fiber reaction. So we already know that A giving rise to P means if it is going fiber reaction, reactant concentration decreases. So your reaction move in a decreasing concentration of the reactant, so fiber reaction. Okay, and if your concentration of reactants uh, products if we are decreasing, we are decreasing, removing the concentration of the products. Then what happens? The reaction move to increase the concentration of the product. That is the fiber reaction. So always we want fiber reaction. So you want fiber reaction for a chemical uh, process. Increase the concentration of the reaction and decrease the uh, remove the product formed. That is a we have to do. And the next one uh, pressure. So. If it is a more moles to less moles is going on reaction, then you have to take as the high pressure we have to apply. And less moles to more moles it is going reaction, you have to apply the low pressure. So if delta Ng equal to zero, then no effect of pressure. Okay. And what is the temperature effect? Temperature case. If it is exothermic reaction means use low temperature and endothermic reactions means high temperature we have to use. Okay. This is the simple simple case you take any one reaction suppose N2 plus 3H2 giving rise to, to NH2. Delta H will be negative. So this reactant side 4 moles are there, here 2 moles there. Okay. So what we have to do for increasing the concentration of the product? You have to add reactants N2 and H2 time to time. You have to remove the ammonia time to time. That is the first basic thing with respect to concentration. And it is a with, uh, more moles to less moles. So we require high pressure is required around 200 atm they are used. And delta H will be negative. So it will be required delta H negative means low temperatures are required. So if this condition what high pressure, low temperature we have to use and time to time we have to add reactants and products products we have to remove. So like that uh, we can apply this uh, literature principle on chemical reaction based on the conditions. Next uh, suppose melting point is okay this key points you can remember well. So solid is converting to liquid. Solid is converting to liquid. So in all cases it will be two types uh, process will be there where volume will be decreases where volume will be increases. Okay. So solid is converting to liquid. So where volume will be decreases and uh, volume will be increases. Okay. Volume decreases case you will get ice, diamond, corundum. Right. This case is pressure increases, melting point will be decreases. And uh, here this one uh, gold, copper, iron, sulfur, etc. case. Volume increases, here pressure increases, melting point will be increases. That is a point you can remember. And uh, vaporization, what happens? Vaporization. Vaporization is the liquid is converting to uh, gas. This delta H should be positive. So it is a which reaction and endothermic reaction. So endothermic reactions, if your temperature increases, reaction will be more forward reaction fast. Vaporization takes less fast. And boiling point, boiling point, yes, you have to observe carefully. If I increase the pressure, pressure increases, then what happens? The vapors in gas state will be there. That will be condensed. It will be condensed and converted into what? Liquid. Okay, papers condensed and converted into liquid. And uh, this uh, now what happened to the vapor pressure? Decreases. To reach that vapor pressure 1 atm, we require more temperature. So that's why boiling point will really increases. Boiling point increases. Uh, when pressure is increasing, boiling point will really be increases. That is uh, another key point you have to learn. Okay. So this is about uh, uh, chemical equilibrium part. Okay.
So basically questions will become this uh, finally composition expressions related and the next one uh, questions will become so based on uh, this K P K C relation and Q and K C relations. Okay. And finally from the Lichardia principle. Okay. So that is about uh, chemical equilibrium part. Okay. Thank you.